We're going to worship the Lord now with the ministry of giving. Giving is so important. And it's so important that you learn about giving as part of your grace ministry. You, you, you neglect giving, you neglect, you neglect grace. Amen. So let's visit the scriptures today. So we have urged Titus. That's what he said. We have urged Titus who encourage you giving in the first place. Now notice, he said, encourage, Titus encourage you to give in the first place, to return to you and encourage you to finish the ministry of giving. What did he call it? The ministry of what? Giving. giving. Verse 7. Since you excel in so many ways. In other words, they excel in your faith. In your faith, you excel. Your, your gift speaker, your knowledge, your enthusiasm, and your love from us. I want you to excel also in the gracious act of giving. What did he say? Gracious act of giving. Verse 8. God will generously provide all your needs. How will God provide all, all your needs? That you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. Wow. Verse 9. Not so loud. As it is written, say, they share freely and give generously to the poor. How do they give to the poor? See, I, I, talk, I want to say something about this. We give to a food bank. You know, nobody, some people don't never give to the food bank. Food bank is part of your men. If just one plate, five dollars. Amen. This good deed will be remembered. How long? How, how long is it going to be remembered? Forever. Verse ten. For God is the one who provides seed for the farmer. Now, like God provides seed to the farmer, and then bread to eat. The same way he will provide and increase your resources and then produce a great harvest and generosity in your life. Verse 11. Yes, you'll be enriched in every way so that you can always be generous. And when you take your gifts to those who need them, they will, they will do what? They will thank God. You know, you know, a lot of times, you, you don't understand this. When you, when you give to other people, you might give to a sinner. God tells you to give him $5, give him $10. And you know what I'm Well, suppose he goes and spend it. That's, that's, that's his problem. That's not yours. Not, you, not for you to be concerned about. If God told you to do it, he told you to do it. Verse 12. So two good things will result from this ministry of giving. Notice he called it the ministry of giving. The needs of the believers in Jerusalem, or, or, or where we're at, New, New Jersey, will be met. And they will joyfully express their thanks to God. Who are they going to express to? Joyfully thank to God. To God. Verse 13. As a result of your ministry, they will give, you gl give glory to God for your generosity to them, and to all believers will prove that you are obedient to the good news of Christ, that you are obedient to grace. That's how they know. That's how they know. Amen. Praise God. We praise God. This is a blessing to you. We're going to pray now, and we're going to, we're going to our ministry of giving. Rather, put the sign up. <laughs> Today, don't do Robert Court ministry. Just do w.faithlove.org. Faith, go to www.faithlove.org and click on Give. Or test giving, 973-355-7719. Or you may mail it to 380 Broad Street, Newark, New Jersey. Father, we thank you for the people who are givers. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. You know, it's so important that you give. Very important. I want to tell you to... Don't tell you to do nothing I don't do myself. Amen. Praise God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you for your word. We give you the glory, give you honor and praise. We thank you, Father, this word will be sown on good ground and it be a will bear fruits in the hearts of the people. 
and we give you glory, give you honor, and pray. Right now, Heavenly Father, we ask that we anoint the ears to hear, to hear what the Spirit of God will have to say. We do, Father, ask you now that each one here will hear his word accurately, and they will hear it precisely, and they will not be healed with what they hear, but they will go out and be doers of it. For we realize, Heavenly Father, the doers that get the result, and we give you all the glory and all the praise and all the honor. We pray right now, Father, in this message, all of you, and none of me, in the name of Jesus. We thank you that revelation not so full of today, unhindered by the Satan or the minor force. We thank you, Father, your words should turn, should turn to your void, but it shall accomplish what you said it would do. And also, Father God, that we thank you, the Lord thy God, that cannot lie, and you confirm with signs, Father. Therefore, I declare the signs shall fall. In Jesus' name, amen. Matthew 6, verse 24. Matthew 6, verse 24. Now watch this. No man serves two masters. Either you're going to serve the kingdom of God's system or you're going to serve Satan's system. One or the other. You can't serve to both masters. But you will hate one and love the other. I hate the world. I don't hate the people in the world, but I hate the world's system of operation. No one can serve two masters, but you will take one and love the other. You will be devoted to one or despise the other. Notice that. People in the world, they, they got the spirit of mammon on it. They, they, they doing everything they can with their money. Now what? You were devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. Verse 25. I'm sorry, that's I'm, the New Living Translation I'm reading now. That is why I tell you not to worry about every day tomorrow. Don't worry about tomorrow. Whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear. Why do you have to worry about it? Because Jesus dealt with it 2,000 years ago. Isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Verse 26. 20. Yeah, 26. Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest. Or store fools in the barn. But your heavenly father feeds, feeds them. Your heavenly father do what? He feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? Wow. Verse 27. Can all, can your, all your worry add a single moment to your life? You're going you're gonna to worry about tomorrow. You're going to worry about this. You're going to worry about this bill. You're going to worry about this way. Is, is, is it going to do any good? No. Verse 28. And why worry about your clothing? Why worry about it? Look at the little of the field. How they grow and they don't work or make their clothing. What is that? They don't work or make their clothing. Verse 30. Now watch this. And if God cares so wonderfully for the wildflowers that are here today and are thrown in the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith or a short burst of faith? Verse 31. So don't worry about these things, Stan, what we will eat, what we shall drink, or what we shall wear. Verse 32. These things dominate the thoughts of the unbelief. What is, now watch this. They do what? They dominate the thoughts of the unbeliever. What are you? But that's what dominates the, th the thoughts of the unbeliever. But your heavenly father already knows, or your heavenly father already knows this. He knows what you need. Verse 34, 3. Now, this is what you're supposed to do. Seek ye first God above all else and live what? Righteous. And he will give you everything you need. Everything you need. Verse 34. That's my new different translation. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worry. Today is enough for today's trouble. Is enough for what? Today. It's enough for today. That's enough, ain't it? 
Amen. Now, John 15, 1 and 2 first. I am the true vine. Jesus said, well, he's the true what? Vine. And my father is the husband. Verse 2. Every branch in me bears not the truth. He take it away. And every branch that bears truth, he purges it that they bring forth what? How much fruit? More fruit. You're going to get how much fruit? More fruit. Amen. Verse 4. Abide in me. Talk about Jesus. I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abides in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. See, Jesus died to fulfill the promise, and we, we're not going to abide in him. We're going to abide in the, the, the steel, kill, and destroy in that system. Verse 5. Now what? I am the vine. That's what Jesus said. You're the branches. He that abides in me, I in him, the same, the same bringing forth how much fruit? Much fruit. For without me, you can do what? Nothing. Amen. Now, look at, look at Ephesians chapter 4. I want to show you something here. There's only one Lord, one faith, one baptism. I'm going to say this to you. The title of the message today, the only true faith. The only true faith that you have today is the one that's the faith of Jesus. There's a difference between the faith, having faith in Jesus, having, having faith in Jesus, but I said, then having the faith of Jesus. There's a difference. Basically, because when you have the faith in Jesus, you think you've got to do something to materialize, to make it come to pass. Amen? Glory to God. Now, in the Greek, let me say, let me say this to you. Yeah. The Greek very, very well, important in America, the Greek version of everything is important. See this Bible right here? This Bible is full of pages was done by the translators to their convenience. They put commas in. They put different things in to, to make a great sentence so that we could get understanding in, a, in an American culture, which is the Western culture. culture. That's how we have, adhere everything. And so we've been taught everything in a Western, Western culture. We never taught everything from the Greek or even, even from the Hebrew. So therefore, everything we know we learn from the American, American culture, and that's wrong. Amen? Now, what did I tell you, tell you the truth? Matthew, I'm going to show you right now what one of the verses that people use all the time to go up. Matthew 28, verse 19. Matthew 28, verse 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations and baptizing them in the name of the Lord and the Son of God of, and the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Now that's what we've done. We went out on the streets. We've done that. We went out on the streets of Newark. We've set up a PA system out there. We did all those things. And 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 don't get me wrong, people might have got saved, and I'm not down there, but that's not what he said to do. That's what, that's what the world do. Why? Because they took it from an American standpoint, not from a standpoint of the Hebrew. Now, Matthew 28, it says, Go ye all therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son, Son and the Holy Ghost. That's what American did. Now, the word in, in the Greek, or, or going, we're going to put the Greek up, going, called going, porengo. You got that? Go, poema. You said it last week to me. You had it on the Greek. Praise God. You got it on the schedule. It 
It's not a schedule. I put it on there. Poor. It's called P-O-R-E-U-O-M-A. Look at the presentation. You see? Is that on the presentation? It's not on the presentation at all. But anyway, in the Greek, the word, the word, you have any, 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 you have any of those on there? You have none of them on there? All right, Paul of Roma, I took Gabe last week. I'm going to say it then. It means, in the Greek, it means go or going. And what, ha- what is happening, as you're going, as you're going to shop right, as you're going to uh, Whole Food, as you're going, as you're going to the dentist, you witness the people under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, not under your guidance. Y'all hear what I said? As we're going, we're supposed to do that. You see what I'm saying? As we're going. And so many times, we, we have not done that. We, we went out, we got to have a witnessing team. We got to have all these people get there. We got to force people in the church to go out witnessing something, something that they're not supposed to be doing. My wife, years ago, she said, I don't think we should be doing that. She, she, she said to me, I don't think we should, do, and we shouldn't be doing that. We're supposed to come and hear from the Holy Spirit. Now, what most people the world that you go visit every day, they have been saved already. He said, I came, I came to preach the gospel to the whole world. The guy that, was, uh, that, that said, remember me in paradise, what did Jesus say to him? I remember me in paradise. This day, you will have your day in paradise. You see? Why? He recognized that he had a problem. He recognized that Jesus is on the cross. But he re- the other guy... He didn't, he, didn't, he didn't acknowledge Jesus at all. If you call yourself the son of God, why don't you, why don't you, why don't you get down and tell him where to go? Amen? Praise God, praise God. Romans 14, 7. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. I'll say it again. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but what? Righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Now, every day, I say, Father, I thank you. This is what I do. I thank you that the kingdom of God is on the inside of me. I thank you your righteousness is in me. I thank you, Father, that your peace is in me and your joy and the Holy Ghost is in me and it's finished, it's done. I thank you, Father, that your wisdom is in me. I'm flowing in your wisdom and your total direction in everything I do. I th- you see what I'm saying? I thank you, Father, that, that everything that's been provided already is on the inside of me by your grace. And I just thank you for it, and I give you glory and honor and praise for it. Amen? Amen. What, what verse I took this church in? Romans 4, 17. Now, now watch this. Was that? Luke 23, 20, 34. Oh, before you turn to Luke 30, 20, 23, I want you to put up the arrow translation. Arrow sense. You got that, right? Our chance. It's up there, ain't it? <coughs> I know I put it up there. It's not up there? It's not on the schedule. You got the wrong schedule then. You just have a schedule that made up for, for the day's date, 922. And you don't have the arrow schedule? 
Could you have it on your presentation? Okay. It's, on the, it's not on the presentation. It's not on, it's not on the schedule. Put it up, Paul. Put the arrow schedule up. The arrow schedule on the thing. Pre, on the thing on the schedule. Put the put on the presentation. There you go. Anytime the New Testament was written, it was written in the aorist tense, which means it's finished. It means that it's done. You got it? No, okay, that's right. Okay, it means that it's done already. So guess what? When, when the New Testament was written, it was the arrow tense, it is the default tense to greet. Is the default tense. To other words, the finish is, is done. The default tense of the New Testament scripture. Everything is done already. Everything you need is done. That's what the Greeks said. Now, that, now do you see, do you see where you can turn around and mix up this and you, you believe that it's not done? You see what I'm saying? And you're not in the arrow tense. Amen? Now, what was I at? What verse did I turn to? I told you Luke 23, 34. That's right. That's all right. We flow with it. Then said Jesus' father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted raiment and cast them. What did Jesus say? He, what did he do? Forgive them not what they do. But what they did was he forgave them already. He forgave them when he was on that cross. He, he, Jesus did not just come for the Christian. Jesus came to what? The world so they can recognize that he's, that he's a Messiah that already been forgiven. They don't have to do nothing to get forgiven, but they have already been what? Forgiven. Now, last week I gave you some steps to follow. If you don't understand, you can't forgive. If you don't understand, you can't forgive. Amen? Now, you must realize everything is finished. That's the first step. You must realize everything is finished already. Amen? The next step, you must receive, you must realize, receive the forgiveness that God has provided for you. You gotta receive it. So say, because whatever you're doing, you gotta receive it. You gotta receive it. But if you don't understand it, you can't receive it. You all got that? Yeah. If you don't understand it, you can't receive it. And the next step is rest. In the finish. Everybody say, rest in the finish. Rest in the finish. Now, for the rest. Amen. Now, while you resting in the finish, it says to us, there's only one word we're supposed to do while we're resting. What is that? Labor. Hebrews what? Did I put that on there? Hebrews 4.11. Hebrews 4.11. Why? That's, that's, that's Hebrews 12.2. Hebrews 4.11.
Let us labor. What are we supposed to do, y'all? Now, how I labor is I labor in what the words say. That's where the word goes into my spirit, man. And guess what? Sooner or later, it will come out. It might, it, it might come out not the way you should think it could come out. It'll come out the way God wants it to come out. And as you get developed in that, you develop your spirit, man. And your spirit, man, get developed in what? What does your spirit, man, get developed? Your spirit, man, get developed in the what? It get developed in what? The finish. It gets developed in what? There you go. So it says, let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall the example of unbelief. Now, he tells me there, you're going to wind up being in unbelief. Why? You didn't labor. You didn't put it in. He, Jesus came to die so you could put it in. But you won't put it in. Now, the next step, 10, John 10.10, 10. you have a devil that's on the scene. You have who? Devil, devil and his demons. They're not going to sit back and let you just do this. Hello? They're going to try to get you over to their realm. They're going to do their best to get you over there. Why? That's where they kill that's what it's still, and that's what it's destroy in that realm. So what? So now, here come, you got the word, you got the, you got it's finished, you're going to make the steps, you said I received it, hello? You're going to you, you're gonna labor to, to enter into his rest. Now here comes the devil. Now, I, I said this before, I said this before, I said it again. Jesus knew who he was, Without the devil, it thou be the son of God. You who you are, regardless of what the circumstances says. Y'all heard what I said to you. Be regardless. And if you, if you contribute to what, the, what, what this natural man wants, you get what? The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and destroy. Now, why did, now, now notice this. But watch this. Jesus said, I have come that they may have life, that you may have life on this earth, and they may have it more abundantly. Or to the full, amplify said, to the field, to the overflows. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Now, Mark 11, verse 23. You're all familiar with that verse. Everybody's familiar with it. When, when Jesus went on, the, went on the boat with them, he said to them, why didn't you echo? Why didn't you echo? Why didn't you say something out of your mouth? I told you what to say, but you didn't say it. So Jesus had to say it. What did Jesus say? Jesus said, let's go over to the what? Other side. That's all they had to say? But they didn't say it. Master, cares not, we perish. But Jesus said, we're going to the other side. Now watch this. But this is what it was. But beauty, I say unto thee, that whosoever shall say this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast in sea, and shall not doubt where in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have what he said. Now, what, you want it to come to pass? You got to echo it. Have faith in God means echo. Hello? You got to say it with your mouth. Open your mouth. At home, in your bed. I won't say that now. No, that's too bold. But in the bed, wherever you are, so to open your mouth to echo. But Christians don't echo. Amen. Do you have the generous and positive ownership? You have that. Put that up. Put that up, Paul. Jenison, the Jenison. You have the Jenison positive? It's on the Greek, whatever, Jenison positive. You see? 
Look at the president, you know, get it out of the presentation, throw it up there. You got it, Jackie? Okay. The generous deposit means Jesus' ownership. It means that Jesus owned the faith. Mean the faith of Jesus. He owns it. Now watch this. The Father had it and he gave it to Jesus when he walked the earth. You got it. Now, if you don't use it, that's up, that's up to you. But you got it. So it's your generous and possession denotes ownership, a positive of the situation. Amen? Ownership. So Jesus owned it. Amen? So what does Jesus do? He owns it. Now, Romans 3.22. Even the righteousness of God, which is by the faith of Jesus, it came by faith of Jesus, not faith in Jesus, the faith of Jesus, unto all and upon all them what? Believe. Believe. For there is no what? There is no what? No difference. Romans 3, verse 24. Being justified, freely by his grace, the redemption that is in Christ. Where is the redemption at? It's in Christ Jesus. The redemption is in Christ Jesus. Amen. Now, what was that? Hebrews 12, 2. Watch this. This is this is a this is a given. Looking unto Jesus, the author finishes of what? Now, what's wrong with that? We're not the, we don't have no faith. But the faith we got is Jesus' faith. The faith of Jesus. Who for the joy that was set before him, what did he do? He despised, he, he what? He endured the cross, despising the shame. He sat down and where? At the right hand of the throne. Of God. Where's Jesus now? There he is, there you are. Now, mm. let me see. One minute. Okay. You look in your Bible. I meant to do Pisces. Pisces Jesus. Pisces be so crystal. You all have that one? Pisces? Put it up. I don't know how that got up there like that, but that's all right. Watch this. Pisces Paul. It might be the Greek or whatever. P I S. We'll wait. You got it? There you go. I said Paiso. It's under the. P I S T I L O S. It's not on it? It's not on the schedule? Okay, Jackie, you got a pi. You got paramatic. That's pi, sir. P I. You don't have that on there? You don't have it? I looked on your thing. It's on there. Did you look on the presentation? Look on the presentation. Presentation. You see Paisa, P I S T I L E? P I, you see it? 
You got it? I'll wait. There it is. Piso, Iso Christian. I could be pronouncing it wrong. Which means the faith of Jesus Christ or Jesus' faith. Everything is Jesus' faith. Everything is Jesus' faith. Amen? Romans 3.20. Which means it's finished. It's done. Everybody says it's cooked. It's done. It's ready to eat. Amen. Romans 3.20. Now it says, Therefore by the deeds of the law, there should not be justified in the sight. For the law is the knowledge of what? The law is the knowledge of what? Sin. That's all it does. The knowledge brings We thank God for the law because if it wasn't for the law, we wouldn't be in Christ now. Y'all see what I'm saying? We thank God. But we're not under the law. We're under what? Amen. Amen. Romans 3, 24. Being justified freely by his grace, we are justified by his what? Grace. Through redemption that is in what? Christ. Where is the redemption at? In us. It's in Christ. And Christ is in us. Amen. Glory to God. Now, Galatians 2.16. And let me tell you something. We're going to get better. Everybody said, we're going to get better and better and better at this. We're not, we don't know it all yet. There's more to learn. But we're going to get better and better. And we're not going to stop. Now watch this. Knowing that a man is justified by the works of the, is not justified by the works of the law. I said that wrong. But by the faith of, of. Notice it said the faith of, not faith in. It said faith of. Even we have believed in Jesus that we might be justified by the faith of Christ. He didn't say we we're going to be justified by Christ, did he? He said the faith where? Faith of Christ. Not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no what? No bread be just arrived in his sight. Now, here's the one that everybody loves. Galatians 2.20. And I, I quoted, and I said year after year after year, I quoted it, but I didn't have no idea. I had the idea that it was Jesus' faith, but I didn't have no idea the revelation I have on it now. Now watch this. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. What did he say? I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives where? He lives in you. And the life which I now live in Christ, I live by the faith who? Of. By who? The faith of. By who? The faith of the Son of God. Why? He loved me and gave himself what? There you go. Y'all got it. Now, look at the TPT, the Passion Translation. Now watch this. My old identity has been co-crucified with Christ. No longer lives. Now everybody says, my flesh no longer lives. And now the essence of this new life is no longer mine. For the anointed one lives his life through me. How do the anointed one live? He lives his life through you, through me, through him. We live in union as one. My new life is empowered by the faith of what? The Son of God. And what did he do? He loved me so much that he gave himself for me dispensing his life into mine. He put his life in me. He's in me. Wherever I go, he's in me. Whatever I do, he's in me. Amen? Now, last scripture. Galatians 2.20, message translation. This is, uh-oh. This is awesome. Christ's life showed me how. He showed you what to do, every situation. And enabled me to do it. 
I adorn myself completely with him. Indeed, I have been crucified with Christ. My echo or ego is no longer the central. It's not the central. It's no longer important. I appear righteous before you or have your opinion. And I am no longer driven to impress impress God. We don't have have to try to impress God. Christ lives in me. The life you see me living is not mine, but it is lived by the faith of, now see, they got in there. It's supposed to be the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Now, just like I told you before, the translator, he translates things for his convenience. He put commas in. He put periods in. Sometimes it might not be. Y'all got one saying thing. And we go along with that, and we say that's the way we do it because we heard it from the Western language or the American language all the time, and we thought that was right. But the original Bible, it was written in Greek. In Greek. That's what it was written. Amen. Were y'all blessed today? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, we're going to continue to worship the Lord, but to give you the opportunity to make, to be reconciled to the God you just heard about. Amen. Romans, Romans says that the doctrine confess with thy mouth, not with thy confess, thou shalt confess with thy mouth of the Lord Jesus, and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. With your heart, you get saved in your seat. You get saved where you are. You echo it later, but you saved already. I said you echo it. God is the one that draws men unto him. Nobody going to make you. Nobody going to force you to do it. So I just like to make it very simple for you. To Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I make you Lord of my life. Jesus is now my Lord and Savior. That's all. Now, if you receive salvation, I'd like you to text, I'm saved. Because we'd like to hear from you. To 2100 for more information on what happened to you. Or you can call 973-577-7084. That's not the one you should have up. You should have 2100 and just text, text, I'm saved. 21000 and text, I'm saved. Amen? Either one. Either one, you'll get saved. I don't know how you, how you got that up there like that. But praise God. Now, guess what? If you're at home, you're unable to get the church or some, whatever the reason is, we're on all day on the internet. You can, you can learn. You can know more, more about this grace. You can learn more about this finish. All you got to do is just do it. We're going to show you how to become a member. Do you desire to become a member? Remember, you don't have that? You got salvation now. Oh, remember, she got member on. I apologize. Become a member, text joining to 21000 and press text joining. That's all you got to do is text joining to become a member. We want you to know we love you so very much. And God loves you. I mean, he loves you. You don't know how much he loves you. He, got, he died on the cross for you so that you could be already forgiven. The only thing you had to do, a little thing like receiving. That's all you had to do today. Amen. Praise God. May God bless you. May his face shine upon you. Now he is able to keep you from falling. But present you faultless. Let, him, let you go in peace, those that are here and those that are watching by internet also. We love you so very, and God loves you. Be blessed. God loves you. God bless you.